After all the back and forth with the Senate and the House of Representatives, Festus Kiamu gets go ahead on recruitment by presidency. And I am still in the race, Governor Akeridolu declares. This is Plus Politics. I am Kayode Ladendi. Welcome back. This is Plus Politics. President Muhammad Buhari has asked Festus Kiyamo, the Minister of State for Labor and Employment, to proceed with the execution of the Special Public Works Program. Senior presidential sources confirmed the president directive on the program. Kiyamo has been given the go-ahead as regards the recruitment process of the 774,000, some say it's 773,000 jobs across the country under the government special public works program. Kiamo described the controversy as an attempt by the National Assembly to bypass him in the implementation of the project. Joining us to throw more light on this seeming controversy is Reverend Dako Daramola, a political analyst, and later will be joined by Dayo uh, uh, Alibiyoshu, that's Bush Alibiyoshu, a former member of the House of Representatives. But let's start with uh, Dr. Dramola. Good evening. Good evening to you. Yeah, good to have you. I, I recall vividly your position on this issue when we had that drama that we still um, play from time to time. Uh, do you think that um, the presidency or Kiamo uh, refused to explore the political option? I want to give a good evening to everybody, Kyle and, and the audience uh, out there. Um, I remember my position the last time that you hinted at, and my position has not changed. I remember I said then that um, the National Assembly was on the wild, wild goose, uh, I mean, goose chase, and um, it was only attempting what we call uh, legislative bullying, um, you know, harm wrestling, which, you know, uh, will result to nothing. Because um, no doubt, and I think I should lay the foundation this way, but on the side of the Ministry of Labor, uh, don't forget that the Ministry has uh, about five um, uh, agencies under it, uh, and the first, of course, uh, or one of it will be the uh, NDE, another is the NSITF, uh, that is the Nigeria Social Insurance Transform, we have the National Productivity Center, we have the Industrial Arbitration Panel, and we have the Michael Modi National Institute for Labor and Studies. And so these are directly under the Ministry of Labor. Obviously, Kiyamu, um, as the Minister of State for Labor, is you know the supervisory uh, or supervising minister, you know, for uh, that particular uh, of, of NDE. So how do you then say that the minister does not have you know um, uh, legitimacy, you know, over an you know, an agency? or department, sorry, under it. It, it's, it's, it doesn't make any sense. You know, you cannot, it, it is not the function of the House of Representatives of the, of the Senate to begin to determine how, you know, these agencies, the departments, and, you know, under a particular, particular ministry, how they function. It is the president through the office of the SGF, you know, to resolve all of that. So for me, on one side, uh, going into all of that, you know, I think was just, you know, chasing something that was not, properly before it. Okay. However, let me also lay it this way, so that we will not get confused. From a constitutional standpoint, from the point of the Constitution, the Joint Committee of the National Assembly, you know, has its own powers, you know, uh, that, that is, it is called the powers and control over public forms, and is is under Chapter 5 of our Constitution. Now, let me quote Section 88 of that particular, uh, you know, uh, of, of that uh, uh, a chapter of the Constitution. It talks about the two houses of the National Assembly, okay, directing investigations into the conduct of affairs of any person, any authority, any ministry, or government department charged or intended to be charged, okay, with the duty 
of or responsibility for, and this is the area of interest in the matter we are discussing. It talks about dis disbursing or administering monies appropriated or to be appropriated by the National Assembly. Subsection 2 also states that the powers conferred on the National Assembly under the provisions of this section are exercisable only for the purpose of enabling it okay, to expose corruption, inefficiency, or waste in the execution or administration of laws within its legislative competence and in the disbursement or administration of funds okay. appropriated by it. Now, the, the, having laid the foundation on the two sides, now, let's talk about the National Assembly. In terms of investigations, the first question is, what are you investigating? Is it a matter between the NDA okay, and good, the ministry to, res to resolve? That is for the president to resolve. Okay, that is uh, the executive. Reverend Dakbo. It is for the president to uh, resolve whatever issues. Yes, please. Reverend Dabwa, thank you for that foundation you've laid. Thank you for that reference. And from time to time, we will go back to it. But I don't want you to exhaust all the points that we will uh, stay on. And fortunately, we've been joined by Honorable Dio Bush, Alibi Oshu, a former member of the House of Representatives. Uh, uh, you're welcome. Thank you for having me. Now, let me quickly bring you into the conversation. We're looking at... Um, the issue that has to do with uh, Festus Kiamu going ahead, pardon my language, and damning whatever the National Assembly has said, trying to stop the program. What is your take? I understand that uh, beyond investigating, beyond finding out what is going on, there seems to be some kind of political interest. Uh, do you think the presidency or the minister has done well by ignoring this uh, political solution? Um, first of all, we need to understand that uh, one of the functions of the legislature, well, the legislature is to make laws aside and to legislate. They have the power of oversight function here. How is it being done? Is it being done properly? Is it being done according to what the rules say? That's on one hand. In any time, it's important to understand that there's also what you call a uh, Lobbying. Um, part of the oversight function would be. Yeah. There's some kind of interference. I'm sure it will be sorted as soon as possible. Um, probably there might be need for us to be a bit uh, stationed in one position so that we don't have that kind of interference. Uh, anytime we get him, he will continue with his thought. So, Reverend Dakbo, can we look at. Um, that session you quoted, that the National Assembly wants to be sure that the agency that has been given this responsibility to perform, irrespective of who is the supervising minister, the relevant questions are being asked. How would this 1,000 people come up in a local government? We have representatives that were voted for, probably people who have direct access. They haven't said that it's an issue of 15% not enough. What they were asking is, let us know what the due process is all about. What is wrong with that? Now, the, the due process in question was very, I mean, it's very clear. The minister working with the National, I mean, with the national uh, Development uh, you know, uh, ND, it's very clear what happened. And um, that is the National Directorate, Directorate for Employment. I mean, the people that were put together are the stakeholders. ASU was part of this project. Khan, that is the Christian Association of, of Nigeria, they are stakeholders, they are part of the project. The National Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, eh, they were part of the project. The National Union of Road Transport Workers, they were part of the project. The market women, okay, or the market people, you know, the market groups, they were part of the project. The civil society organization, you know, were part of the project. The youth organizations, were part of the project. The traditional institutions were part of the project. Who else would you have wanted to be part of the project, you know, that will empower the ordinary Nigerians, ordinary people, okay, just to support them for about two months or thereabout, you know, with 20, 20,000 naira each from each local government? What, what more people do you want to come on board? Now, that's why I said the intricacies of this project. I don't want to dwell too much on the politics because all of this, we you know, is what, you know, in, 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 in 
or some new agencies, you know, brought confusion. Even, even the headlines, you know, brought confusion because you remember very well that, um, you know, um, oh, don't forget some of the headlines read that uh, uh, and uh, the NC Oluomo you know, we're taking, you know, it, it is that at the end of the day, you all know, we know it's about politics. Because like I said, what is the National Assembly investigating exactly? What has transpired? What has happened in the 52 billion naira disbursed, which they have operated, that has brought about the investigation. Okay, and if they say they want to know how in Mali before everybody, we all know the people who are part of the, of the process. Of determining the beneficiaries, you know, of, of this, you know, of, of this project. So that's why I said that, you know, we should set politics aside, and that's why I didn't start with the issue of politics. I began by setting aside what, you know, um, the functions of the executive, vis-à-vis -vis as it relates to the Ministry of Labour and as it relates to NDE, and also what the Constitution says, how the Constitution empowers the National Assembly, the Joint National Assembly, to investigate. So my question is, what are they investigating? Now, like, let, me, let me go back to it again. That they can investigate issues that have to do or borders on disbursing or administering monies. Okay, fine. Appropriated or to be appropriated by the National Assembly. This money has been appropriated. So what investigation? Into what? Okay? That's number one. Number two, the Constitution is also saying to expose corruption. You can, you can summon you know, an investigation. Which corruption are you exposing at this stage? Okay, There's, and the Constitution also says ineffic inefficiency or waste in the execution or administration you know, of laws within it. So with, what, what, what waste have we seen? What inefficiency, what, what you know, lack of competence has been displayed so far that brought about the human cry that we have seen so far? So I think Mr. President and Professor Skeyamo needs to be applauded for standing their ground. This is the executive. Let the executive, if the NDE has issues, issue roots, the NDA should root their matter. It's a department of government. It's a department under the Ministry of Labor. If they feel that certain things have been circumvented, okay, they should go through the SDF, you know, and go to the presidency. It's, an, it's a department of government. So if they feel they have any grounds, they should go to the presidency and resolve their matter. It is not for the National Assembly to resolve this kind of matter. That's what I'm saying. If corruption has been put on the table, nobody will challenge what they are saying. If inefficiency has been put on the table, nobody will challenge what they are saying. If any waste okay, has been put on the table, nobody will challenge what they are doing. But the reason why First Oskayamo and then, I mean, a larger percentage of Nigerians are challenging the actions of the National Assembly, which again are described as legislative rascality, like I said, this legislative bullying, is that why would you want to determine okay, how the NDE, I mean, how the, the Ministry, uh, Ministry of Labor and his own, you know, department, how they function, allow them to function first. And the evidence of the fact that there is an inefficiency in this okay. thing, or there is a waste in this thing, I, or there is an, I, there is an, you know, corruption. I understand so that. I understand allow that. Uh, first. Yes, as much as I'm not here to fault your position, but I understand that um, you insist on the position of the law, you insist on due process, I am not suggesting other ways. But let's hear from a politician because you probably you're not one. <laughs> okay, uh, what do you make out of this? Uh, I'm sorry we have to go to the phone line because of the failure of network. So, Honorable Bush, how, how is it done? Is it that the allegation is that the lawmakers probably are looking for something extra, something behind the doors. What do you think is their interest? Well, um, <clears throat> across in every in every crime, one of the ways to uh, get the lawmakers to back off, the legislature to back off, is um, to just throw some things uh, in the wheel to get them to back off. Like I have said, um, the executive arm is saddled with the responsibility of doing these things, executing these things. And the lawmakers, the lawmaking arm, has the responsibility to oversight. 
Now, the question is this. At what point will they get to be involved in the oversight function? Will it be at the start saying, listen, let's see the plan. We don't want mistakes made first, and then we go back to the beginning, which would have meant that right from the onset, if anything happened, they would have failed from the onset. Now, they're saying we want our oversight functions to be in, to be, um, we want to be involved as regards our oversight functions from the onset. I mean, I, I would be amazed to see any, lo- any legislator or any, any legis- the legislature say, you know, you must bring it here. We must be the ones to dictate. No, the executives have their functions and the legislative arm also have their functions. <clears throat> now, the only thing you can think of um, as a legislator is that definitely certain people within your constituencies will be employed. They're a part of the people to be employed, the 774,000 jobs. But in the past, you would see, I mean, look at the past problem with the COVID relief, for example. Um, The arm, the executive arm said, listen, we did do this. And it was hard to even point out which people benefited from the COVID relief from within those, um, um, uh, their constituencies. If they had been involved in the first place, then they would be able to identify and say, these are the people who, are, who benefited from this. What else is there for a lawmaker to benefit from other than to make sure that your constituents are actually, have actually benefited if that isn't the case, then that lawmaker would have failed to influence um, those things within, to, to, to play a role in how his constituents also benefit. Uh, no lawmaker is saying that um, it's not the duty of the executive arm to do what they want to do, but oversight function has to be, it can be in stages. It can be at the beginning, in the middle, or at the end. Okay. okay. As a matter of fact, one of the important things is as you, excuse me, um, I have cited the EFCC, for example. I'm sorry to use that as an example. But what is expected of the EFCC is, as much as they are, he's an executive chairman or whoever the executive chairman is, it is duty to, um, on, a, on a regular basis, furnish the legislative arm on how things have been done or on the activities of the commission. Okay, so let, I would let, use that in this continue, case. <clears throat> let me continue to, to continue the conversation with you before I go back to Reverend Dakpo. Uh, but having okay. listened to you, do you think that the National Assembly went overboard by seeing they are stopping the program? No. They, 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 <laughs> see, if they're uncomfortable with it, they have the, the, the National Assembly has the power of the purse. What will be their reason to say we want to withdraw our approval in any climate, whether America, wherever there's democracy, the, the legislator has power of the purse. No, this is not a case because, of approval <clears throat> now. This is a case of we want to find out what is going on. This is not taking place on the, on the floor. They were just asking questions and they said, we will stop this process from going on. Is that constitutional? Please guide me. Well, they not. would have to. They would have to explain how they intend on stopping the process from going on. They would have to explain that themselves, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Excuse me. How they wish to do that without offending the Constitution is something that would be nice to see. Because <clears throat> if they had said that they would stop it, then they would have to... It means if they have that power, they will only be able to stop it within the ambit of the law. Okay. I will come back to you. But, um, Reverend Dakpo, this to me looks more like uh, a battle of ego. I sincerely, this is my opinion, I do not think the House of Reps were interested in sharing this money because this money is unthinkable to imagine that our lawmakers will be showing interest in it. I suspect that their interest is born out of the fact that they want to be politically relevant in their constituency. Hence, They want to get involved in this number of people that are involved. I'm not making an excuse for them. So I'm saying, should we allow ego to make the program suffer? I mean, to be to be to be to be placed above the interests of these people that will benefit. 
But I, I think if you remember very well, I, I said at the last time when we had to discuss this that it was goofiness on the part of the National Assembly, that joint committee, to say they are suspending the program. They have no powers to do that. Under any section of the constitution, they do not have powers. They, can, they have powers to control, you know, public funds. They have power of control over, you know, expenditure, disbursement, and, and usage of administration of public funds. They have power, you know, to investigate. And I've laid this too before you from section 88. I've laid it clearly before you. However, I mean, if you look at subsection 2 of section 88, there's nowhere there that you talked about the power to suspend any project, any program of the executive, you know, that, that has been laid before it and monies have been fully appropriated for. There is no power. There is no such power. What they can do is to investigate. And that's why I said it would have been politically correct for them to have waited, okay, and let this program take off. Then you can have substantial evidence of any form of waste, any form of corruption, any form of form of uh, misappropriation of, or, or you know or, or misadministration. You know, you, you have you have something concrete to talk about. But what I'm being initial begin all this you know you are crying or all, all this love value, then you know you begin to suspect. And their actions are only giving credence to that fact. Let me also state before I leave you know, on this is that if you remember very well, what triggered this whole whole matter? They were before they, they, they have been called, they have been summoned to come, and Kayamo and his team were there. At that point, it was when they threw the an allegation of corruption at him. And then later said, No, let's go and discuss this matter as a family behind closed doors. That was what you know led to all of this. The matter was not calling them to come and put the people forward to, to explain what, what things how things are to be done. Okay, that, that has been Turned out, and everybody in this country is able to read. And we saw how the government clearly statement was a clear statement on the part of you know uh, one of the lawmakers who uh, who threw an allegation of corruption, which was unsubstantiated. Don't also forget that when Kiyamo threw it back at them, that fifteen percent of the valuation in terms of human resource or human capital that is meant to be to, to benefit, fifteen percent had gone to them. They have not been able to clear it. They made the front, you know, the struggle to explain themselves, but nothing concrete has come out of the explanation. So you see, all I'm saying is that you have said it all. Like I said the last time, who are the beneficiaries of this project? It is a common man that is supported for about two to three months. And so if that is your interest, why the program is meant to kick off in October, you are suspending the process, supposedly, in July. How do you now want to put all of this together? Okay. You know, hurriedly, we we'll be done already. Let me, let me ask the you this question because of our time. Uh, legislature. Reverend Dakpo, okay, let sorry, me ask you on. this question because I want, uh, uh, I want a bit of balance. I want him to round off this discussion. But let me ask you this last question. And if you can do me a favor for 30 seconds, I'll be so grateful to respond to this. What is your take about the senior minister in the ministry apologizing to his former colleagues and... The junior minister, pardon my language if I'm wrong, says that my boss, the president, will tell me, do you suspect some kind of subtle insubordination? It's not insubordination. It, 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 when the, when the, when the, when the Gige, Dr. Chris Gige, when the head began to, to plead and to beg, he was playing to the gallery. And I give kudos to Professor Siamo for standing his ground. He reports to the president. He not only report on this kind of matter to, to, to Ngige. Everybody are ministers. They are representing their states in line with the constitution. But because of, of the way things we operate, we cannot have you know, everybody as, you know, call them senior minister. So he has, his, he has his portfolio. He has his responsibilities. And of course, you can see that Ngige, who was played to the gallery as a former senator, has been embarrassed because okay. the president has done the right thing. Okay, it's not for him to go before the senator. And, 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 and no one made a, made a a goofy statement by saying that it is under their purview to determine how, how, how the, the project should be executed. Okay. He made a very careless statement for the so Senate president to make. Thank and thank God, Mr. President, has done what is right. Okay. Uh, Reverend Dapwa, let me also put it on record. I will still keep you for the second segment. Thank you for your intervention. But let me get the final comment from Honorable Libio Shu. Uh, uh, what do you think should still be the political solution? We do not expect some kind of muzzle flexing because we never can tell what the next move of the lawmakers will be. Or should we just consider it as probably not essential? 
Well, to be to be honest with you, um, it's it's very important to find a way out. To a certain extent, I, w- I would um, um, I would agree with um, um, with um, well, with the speaker um, to say that um, Reverend Dapo to say that he's, he's quite right to say the executive have their functions, and for the legislature to say we're going to stop this, no. The only thing that they can do would be to investigate in the course of the program and say, you know what, we, whatever the Constitution says, to say we want to see how this is being done. We want to be involved. And how do you, are you involved? By shadowing how things are being done. <clears throat> Excuse me. He also mentioned earlier that who is the person, who are the people that will suffer, the common man. So on both sides, In any situation where the executive arm and the legislative arm are at war or are not in agreement in any climb, there's usually a huge problem. Because what you now find out is that it spreads beyond just this scheme and begins to creep its way into other areas of the relationship between the executive and the legislative arm. So... I guess I believe that was what Ngige was trying to do. Remember, Keyamo is not a politician. Um, first, Keyamo isn't a politician. He's, he's um, I would call him a technocrat. He's a lawyer. And he's, he's a serving uh, minister of state. Um, he has his way of doing things. But where Ngige is, um, Senator Ngige, the honorable minister, has a good insight of what happens in the parliament and also see what happens in the executive arm, that must have been what prompted his, his reaching out to the legislature out of understanding what can, how this can continue to snowball, okay. you know, into other areas. Thank you so much, Honorable. But I pray that they're able to resolve this amicably so that the common man, it, it doesn't stop the legislature okay. from still performing its oversight function, but in this case, on both sides, the common man is the one at the short end of the stick. Thank you so much, Honorable Dakpo Bush. I mean, Dio Bush. Dio. There's Dakpo, there's Dio. Thank okay, you. I can understand. <laughs> Honorable Dio Bush, I leave you for your intervention. We quite appreciate Thank and you we sincerely much. hope that they will listen to your piece of advice and it will be about Georgia and not World War. Thank you for your time. And thank you thank for staying with us, our viewers. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we go back to Ndo State as they prepare for the APC governorship primary. We'll be right back. <laughs> 